Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So now we're going to move on to the composite volcanoes and this is going to correspond to section 6.7 of your textbook. So what is a composite volcano? Well, composite volcanoes are often quite tall and quite steeply sloped, and they're formed by the accumulation of both lava flows and pyroclastic material, which are related to the eruption of intermediate to felsic lavas. Most of the time, the lava being erupted is intermediate in composition. So let's look at some of the features that we can see associated with composite volcanoes. Well, typically when a composite volcano erupts, you will often get an eruption column, also sometimes called a Plinian column. And this is a mixture of dust, ash, and superheated gases. So we've discussed that the dust comes from the destruction of pre-existing volcanic rock when the volcano actually erupts. So when we have this explosion in the volcano, the rock that was already there, some of it gets destroyed in the process and that gets thrown up in as part of the eruption column. Now also within the eruption column we are going to have ash particles and these are going to be very very small pieces of the lava that get thrown up into the air and as they're moving through the air they will begin to solidify and sometimes they will fully solidify and sometimes they will partially solidify and become semi-solid so think of a think of a state something like play-doh or silly putty. The final uh, part of our eruption column is going to be superheated gas. So as part of this eruption, we're going to have a large amount of volatiles being released, and these volatiles are going to be very, very hot. They're going to be hundreds of Celsius in temperature. And so this means that the gases inside this eruption column could have temperatures in the range of 300, 400, 500 degrees Celsius. So conditions are very, very hot. So the question becomes, well, why do we get this eruption column associated with composite volcanoes? And once again, it all goes back to the amount of gas which is dissolved within the lava. So intermediate and felsic lavas have large quantities of gas associated with them, and they are quite viscous. And so this means when the gas starts to form bubbles, the bubbles cannot escape the lava very easily because it's so sticky. And so this means the bubbles get trapped in the lava, and as more and more bubbles form, the volume of the lava gets larger and larger and larger. And of course, this can eventually lead to a very large volume expansion, which we see resulting in an explosive eruption and this explosive eruption produces the eruption column. So the next feature that's commonly associated with composite volcanoes are pyroclastic flows. So pyroclastic flows are created from material which was part of the eruption column. So obviously when the explosive part of the eruption occurs, we have material being thrown into the atmosphere and obviously it has a velocity to it, it has speed. Now, as this material rises into the atmosphere, it's going to start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and eventually it's going to slow down to the point where gravity takes over. And when gravity takes over, it's going to start pulling this material back down to Earth. And so some of the material that's part of the eruption column will, be, will drop down onto the flanks of the volcano, and it will naturally flow down the side of the volcano under gravity. And this ribbon of material flowing down the side of the volcano is called a pyroclastic flow. So the pyroclastic flow is made of the same material that makes up the eruption column. So it's a mixture of dust, ash, and superheated gas and it will move down the sides of the volcano very, very quickly, anywhere between tens of miles an hour up to hundreds of miles an hour. And pyroclastic flows are extremely dangerous. Now, as the pyroclastic flow rolls over an area, it will obviously leave behind a layer of pyroclastic material as it goes. And so we can see these pyroclastic flows picked out as a part of the pyroclastic sequence of rocks associated with the explosion, explosive portion of a composite volcano eruption. Now, obviously, as part of the eruption, we are going to have lava being produced. In the case of a composite uh, volcano, the lava can exit either from the uh, crater, or it can exit from a vent on the sides of the volcano, or in some cases, it can exit from the base of the volcano. The lava will simply take whatever the easiest path is. 
Now, the lava itself will often be an intermediate lava, so it will be quite viscous, and so this means it will tend to flow quite slowly. So, lava flows from composite volcanoes will not cover huge areas. Compare that to something like a basaltic volcano, so a mafic volcano, where the low viscosity of the lava allows it to flow over large distances. So, most of the time, lava flows associated with composite volcanoes will be limited to the volcano itself. So, they'll either occur on the side of the volcano or down at the bottom of the volcano, but they won't really go any further. Now, as part of uh, most composite uh, volcanic eruptions, there will often be a smaller amount of felsic lava extruded. And as we know, these felsic lavas are extremely viscous, so they're very, very sticky, and so they can't flow very far at all. And so this means when we have these felsic lavas being extruded, we will often end up forming volcanic domes. So the final feature we often see associated with composite volcanoes are landslide and mud flow deposits. So in terms of landslides, we have lots and lots of loosely consolidated material being deposited on the side of the volcano due to, uh, well, in the form of pyroclastic material. So what you have is a volcano that has very steep sides, lots of very loose material. So as you can probably work out, it won't take too much to make that material begin to flow down the sides of the volcano under gravity, creating a landslide. The other feature that's commonly associated with composite volcanoes are mud flows. So typically what will happen is, is your eruption column will go into the atmosphere and all this fine dust and ash will encourage the nucleation of water droplets onto these fine particles. And this means you start building up rain clouds where the eruption column is situated and these rain clouds can often produce very large, very powerful thunderstorms. And so you can, you know, pretty quickly see the problem. What we have is a thunderstorm depositing large amounts of rain very, very quickly, combined with a volcano that has large amounts of loosely consolidated pyroclastic material on its sides. The rainwater and all of this fine material is going to mix together and it's going to create mud flows. And these mud flows are obviously going to fly down the sides of the volcano once again at very, very high speeds. And if you happen to be in the way of one of them, you're going to be in a lot of trouble very quickly. So what kind of rocks do we commonly see associated with composite volcanoes? The most common type of rock that we see, or should I say one of the most common types of rock we see, are andesites. So as we know, andesites are volcanic intermediate rocks. So andesite is going to be produced by the cooling of intermediate lava flows. We are also going to see large amounts of tephra being deposited. So tephra is the material which is part of the eruption column. And as you can see from this picture, it comes in a range of sizes. We have everything from super, super fine dust all the way up to particles which are a few centimeters in size, which are often referred to as lapilli. And so this, these tephra deposits are loosely consolidated. They're very, very weak because it's just material that's raining out of the eruption column and settling on the sides of your volcano. The next type of rock we see is also pyroclastic. And this is a, a specific type of rock which is related to the pyroclastic flow itself. So as we've discussed, as our pyroclastic flow is hurtling down the sides of our volcano, it's going to leave a, a layer of pyroclastic material behind as it goes. And we can see these in the form of uh, deposits related to the pyroclastic flows. These deposits often have a range of class sizes, everything from fine dust all the way up to pieces of material which often are, you know, below one centimeter in size. We don't tend to get the larger pieces of material that we get in the tephra layers. And so that's one of the ways we can kind of tell the difference because there is a difference in the size of the particles associated with these two types of pyroclastic rock. The final type of pyroclastic rock that we often see associated with composite volcanoes are tufts, and tufts are extremely common. 
So a tuff is a type of pyroclastic rock that primarily forms from ash particles. And as we've discussed, these ash particles are just very, very small pieces of lava that get thrown up into the air where they cool and solidify. Sometimes they fully solidify and sometimes they partially solidify. And these, this material will then rain down onto the sides of the volcano where it can you know, become incorporated to form a tuff, which we can see right here. Now, as I also touched on earlier, some of the lava being extruded by our volcano will not be intermediate, it will instead be felsic. Now, these felsic lavas will often only make up a relatively small proportion of the total lavas extruded during a volcanic eruption. So this will lead to the felsic lava cooling down, solidifying and forming the felsic volcanic rock, which we refer to as rhyolite. But the rhyolites will often be more limited in, in how common they are, so they won't be very common. And in terms of their distribution, they will often be limited to volcanic domes. The final type of material we often see associated with composite volcanoes is simply loose debris. And this is just the pyroclastic material which was deposited as part of the eruption itself. And this has no strength to it. So this is the kind of material that's going to get moved around by landslides and by mud flows. So you can see that composite volcanoes produce a larger range of rock types when compared to mafic volcanoes. And the vast majority of these rock types, so the tephra, the pyroclastic material and the tufts, are related to the explosive portion of the eruption. And obviously this differs from the mafic volcanoes which tend to not be explosive in their eruption style. And once again we know that this explosive eruption style is a reflection of the amount of volatiles uh, which are contained within the lava. So we know that intermediate lavas tend to have quite a high volatile content, and so that means they are more likely to cause explosive eruptions. All right, thank you for watching everybody, and have a good day.